Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Wednesday morning. It is August the 26th. Oh, guess what? Today is my birthday. Yes, I am uh, excited. I am 49 years old today and uh, just uh, super excited to still be here on earth and, and being able to, uh, to uh, pastor and teach and preach to kids and to you guys. Um, just love love life and love being a being a children's pastor uh got an awesome thing coming up this week uh sunday we start our what's crazy is our virtual vacation bible school uh it's going to be on our website um starting sunday I want you guys to look for that uh you can watch it anytime that you want to with the kids i don't there's not a really a certain time that it's going to be on there uh, but we're going to do it for the next four weeks on Sundays. We're going to release that. Uh, it's a lot of hard work went into this Vacation Bible School. Uh, craziness. I've never done one like this. But uh, but the reason it's so late is we had all kinds of um, delays and stuff with the COVID and people going on vacation and different things like this. And I finally finished it uh, uh, last week. Really finally got it done. So we... Uh, we work really hard on this and super excited to see uh, what you guys think. Uh, we're also uh, let you know we're going to have uh, crafts each Sunday uh, at the door for the kids uh, so they can pick up their craft for this week at the back door when you're coming in. We'll probably have some tables set up back there and you can pick up their craft and they can work on their craft at home. It's not nothing, it's not anything really complicated, just a simple craft that they can take home and work on while they watch Vacation Bible School. So, uh, awesome. I, I hope you guys got to hear I was super uh, uh, energized and excited and, and nervous all at the same time Sunday morning. I uh, got to preach in the uh, second service. We did the um, the fifth grade graduation. Haven't seen these kids all summer or since March, really. Uh, super, super glad to see them and, and to bring God's Word Sunday. I uh, want to go off a little bit on kind of what I talked about Sunday, about children obeying. But also, we, we ourselves are to obey God as well. Uh, the Ten Commandments are for us as well, to obey Him, to follow God, to... to uh, to follow his statutes, his rules, his orders, his laws, his commandments. Um, that's what we are supposed to do as Christians, as people. We're to obey and follow God. But before we get started, I want to open up in, in prayer this morning uh, with you guys. And uh, I want to say thank God. Well, first of all, before I pray, I want to say thank God for the ones that were in the hospital are starting to go uh, come home. Uh, some are coming home. Some are going into rehab. So God has answered prayers for these people. So glad to hear these people are doing so much better and, and be able to, to get better and get stronger every day. But just continue to pray for them and pray for their families uh, that, um, you know, we worry. We worry about them and their families worry about them. Uh, but just let you know that God is in control. So let's open up in prayer this morning and before we get started. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. I thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for his, his dying on the cross for our sins, Lord. I pray, Lord, today with this message that we're bringing to God. Help us to open our eyes to God. Lord, we are to obey your commands, your statutes to God that you've laid out for us, Lord, to live a, a better life to God that doesn't go against you to God and go against the, your ways to Lord. Help us, Lord, to be strong to God and resist temptation because the devil's out there everywhere that we go, Lord. And he just wants to see us fall. He wants to see us fail. He just wants to destroy us, dear Lord. But Lord, help us, Lord. He wants us to destroy our, our, our ministry to God, our, our witness to God. But pray, Lord, that you'll just help us, Lord, to be strong, depend on you to God, and help us to follow your commands and your laws to God, and help us to obey you in our daily lives to God. And Lord, we thank you for all that you do, and thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Well, our first, book, our first verse, our key verse today is in Exodus. We're also going to be in Genesis today, but our key verse is Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. It says, carefully obey the Lord your God, do what is right in his eyes, 
Pay attention to his commands and keep all his statutes. Man, statutes. As a little a little boy, I, I, I'll give you a little illustration. My grandfather, we, we had a, he had a really, really big farm. I, I got, I doodled the stuff. I'm sorry I touch the stuff on my desk. I gotta, gotta focus on what I'm doing, focus on you guys. Um, well, he had a pasture full of cows and, 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 uh, we all lived right on his, on his farm there. He gave, uh, his, uh, family gave us some land to live on his farm and we'd run through his pastures and stuff and sometimes you'd have to watch out where you're stepping in the uh in the pasture and you'd get something on your shoe if you've ever been in a pasture that was just really really hard to get off and you would rub it in the grass you'd, you'd rub it on the fence or whatever try to get it off and you just could not get it off for it for nothing and guess what and that smell would stay with you all the time and, and it would just it would just stay with you everywhere you went and it and it was it, it's cow manure and it stunk oh it stunk so bad oh my goodness and we had to watch out for this while we're playing in the pastures and stuff but you know that cow manure is kind of like sin as well too you know uh we fall to this temptation uh and and once we fall in temptation and we go go forward and see it through we sin and guess what and sometimes that sin that sin stays with us just like that st- stinking cow manure that's on the bottom of your shoe it stays with you and 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 guess what and the consequences come with it too just like the cow manure that's on your shoe the consequences of accidentally stepping in that is smelling it and it's being with you all day until you wash it off or you spray it off with a hose pipe and get rid of it but the consequences of sin are more there you got to deal you're going to deal with it at one time or another it's going to come out what you've done you have to deal with these sins that you've done and deal it not with necessarily in public but you're going to have to deal with it with your heavenly father you're going to have to ask for forgiveness of your sins and we all sin just like i said son if you listen there's nobody nobody is without sin everybody sins everybody sins for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord we need to carefully obey the lord our god just like exodus fifteen twenty six says obey the lord your god do what is right in his eyes pay attention to his commands and keep all his statutes man what an eye-opening thing oh eye-opening verse try to obey god just like i told you the uh, children are try try to obey that that you the children are to obey but we're to obey as well too just like i said if your children aren't obeying obeying you guess what eventually they're not going to obey god either so we need to obey god well today we're going to be talking in genesis chapter 4 we're going to be going through verse 4 1 through uh 16 in in our bibles we're going to be talking about two brothers uh, cain and abel today you know uh, many scholars have debated about cain and abel's sacrifice uh today that we're going to be reading about that if you if you want to turn your uh turn your bibles to genesis chapter 4 we're going to read verses 1 through 7 first off it says now a man had relations with his wife eve and he conceived and gave birth to cain and she said, I have gotten a man-child with the help of the Lord. Again, she gave birth to his brother, Abel. And Abel was the keeper of the flocks. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. So it came out in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruits of the ground. And Abel, on, Abel, on his part, brought of the firstling, firstlings of his flock and of their fat, fat portions. And the Lord had guarded for Abel and for his offering. Regard for Abel, regard for Abel and his offering. But Cain, and for his offering, he had no regard. So Cain became very angry, and his constance fell. What is constance? It's the, the look on your face. The angry look on your face. Hmm. Well, then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? 
like I said, many scholars have, have, have debated about why Cain's sacrifice was not accepted uh, and Abel's was. We don't know. We really don't know. Obviously, those facts are not necessary to for, for you and I to know. But the point is, something was not right in Cain's sacrifice. He and God both knew what it was, but you and I don't. It could have been anything. Like uh, he brought the offering without, uh, without a giving heart or something like that. What we don't know what it might have been. But Cain gave an ample. Uh, God gave Cain an ample opportunity mm -hmm, to fix the situation and to avoid further problems. Uh, God preferred uh, to uh, Cain preferred to nurse the problem. To nurse the sin, to nurse the anger, and, and grow in his hurt feelings. He just, he just kept growing and growing and growing. Guess what? The sin, the sin kept growing. The anger kept growing, and to fuel his anger. Do you ever have those? Do you ever have those angers that, that you just cannot forgive somebody? And guess what? The anger just grows and grows and grows and grows, man. That that needs to stop. You need to forgive and you need to forget. Sometimes it's hard to forget, but you really do need to forget. Do you ever have those conversations with God? God, I just can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't forgive. I can't. Just help me, dear Lord. Help me. Many of us have. Many times. Sin takes root as the seed seed, uh, uh, seed bed in our thoughts and attitudes. And it just keeps growing. We get angrier and angrier and angrier. And the way to escape God promises in Corinthians 10, 13 is some, sometimes as basics, not simple, as changing the way that you think. Wow, what are some ways that you can you can change that you think? Uh, maybe you can you can you can say scripture, memorize scripture. Remember that you are to love your neighbor uh, as yourself. Uh, different scripture that you can come up with. Sing a song uh, to praise God and ask Him. Another is to pray. Ask God, Hey God, will you please help me with this anger issue that I have for someone in my family or someone in my in my friend, one of my friends or someone that the one of my coworkers. Man, we sometimes we get mad, so mad at our coworkers sometimes, and it just and it just builds and it builds and builds over time, and you just got you you have a hard time forgiving somebody that has done wrong to you. Well, verses 7 and 8. I've already read 7. Let's read verse 8. It says, Cain told Abel. Here's what gets crazy. These are the actions that are going to emerge from, from uh, his sin. Listen. He said, Cain told Abel, his brother, and it came about when they were in the fields that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Man, you talking about anger. Man, the anger built up so much in him that he killed his brother. Wow. You know, just like a farmer, you know, they, they know the difference between something, a plant, when it grows. They know the, the leaves, what the, what the stalk looks like, what the, the plant looks like, and, and, and they know a difference between it and a weed. A weed that grows up and kind of chokes out the plant. You've got to get them weeds out of there and throw them in. Soon, the first couple of leaves on that tiny, tiny plant start coming out, and the farmer knows. He knows. Rebellious thoughts sometimes begin to emerge in our facial expressions just like the Bible said. He said he looked his constants fell. He was looking all mad. Mm. You know, uh, sometimes our facial expressions speak can say a lot more than what the words are that comes out of our mouth. And I see that in kids all the time. The kids show their facial expression, we tell them no mm, and they get really mad and they start showing those facial expressions. Do you know what do you know what facial facial muscles look like when you're upset or you are angry? What do they look like? Mm, like this. Mm, you kind of drop. You, your eyes go down. You get mean. You're looking looking all mean and angry and everything. Mm-hmm. 
And, and I, oh, ask somebody close to you what you look like when you get mad. Uh, my wife can tell when I'm upset or when I'm holding something in and she wants to know what's wrong. And, you know, and, and, I, and I cannot hold anything back for her when I'm upset or something. I have to let her know what's going on. She can tell, and I can tell when she's upset or angry, too. You can tell that by people's facial expressions. Learning to recognize your own facial expressions when something's wrong or when you're angry can help you to control your anger responses, how you're going to respond. Cain's attack on Abel was not done suddenly as a burst of passion. Look at Genesis chapter 4, 5, and 6. It says this, Abel on his part also brought on the uh, firstlings of the flock and their fat, fatted portions, and the Lord had regard for Abel and for his offerings. But Cain and his offering had no regard. So Cain, so Cain became very angry and his consonants fell. He, his, his facial expression showed, showed it all, how angry he was. Notice that, that the fact that Cain took time to think about, think about these things. What did he think about? God knew Cain's thoughts and he knew God, God knew his feelings. Mm -hmm. And he confronted Cain. In verse 7, God gave Cain fair warning. It says, if you do well... You will not your conscience be lifted up. So if you do well and you start thinking about God and thinking about the right things to do, guess what? You're going to start perking up. You're going to start getting happy. Your face is going to show it. If you sure, if that, what's the song? Huh? The song? Your face will surely show it. Uh-huh. You know that song? Mm-hmm. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. That's right. Even God knew that. God knew it. God gave Cain fair warning and guidance. However, Cain refused. He refused to deal with the sinful thoughts. He refused to deal with it. He chose instead to act on his angry feelings. He rebelled. He did not. God told him himself, told him, said, change it. Look for the better feelings. Your, your face will be better. You'll be happy. Do good. Do good. But he didn't. He didn't. Man. Verses 8 through 16. Let's read that. It says, Cain told Abel his brother, and Cain, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then the Lord said, Where is Abel your brother? And he says, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Could you imagine? We, Wow. We kind of say that to God all the time, don't we? When he tries to confront us in, of our sins, we just, we just shrug it off and we keep going. He said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth and received your brother's blood from your hand. When you cultivate the ground, it will no longer yield its strength to you. You will be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to my Lord, My punishment is too great to bear. Behold, you have driven me this day from the face of the ground, and from your face I will be hidden, and I will be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Well, God said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance will be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord appointed a sign for Cain so that no one finding him would slay him. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. After, 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 uh, after getting his revenge, he killed his brother, lured Abel into the field, and killed him. The consequences came on Cain's sinful acts were far greater than the... Uh, the thing that he did, that he thought it was far worse than the thing that he did of killing his brother, but it wasn't. Mm -mm. Cain lost everything that was important to him. 
in Genesis 4, 12, again, the image how Cain felt as he heard this verdict. He said, this is far too great for me. God's cursed ground means the natural born farmer would never be able to grow anything again. He could grow nothing. He would wander, wander his whole life. He would have to depend on other people to feed him. Wow. Never ever would a harvest, he would be able to harvest a crop. Never. Also, this man knew the importance, he knew the importance of, of growing things. But he was so upset. And with no place to call home, he would forever wonder the earth. Forever wonder the earth. Wow. Although those two punishments were bad, the worst was Cain's. Cain also lost his relationship with God. He was away from God. He'd be away from God forever. Man, what a punishment. But he killed his brother out of the sin and the anger that kept building up inside of him, inside of him, if he would have just obeyed God and followed his commands, it would have all been over and changed the, the look on his face to happy and to trust in God to help him, to bring him away from this anger and the sin that kept building up. And he finally killed his own brother because he let this sin continue to bother him. Don't let sin bother you. Do you have sin in your life? Sin in life that are hindering you from your relationship with God? You need to fix it. You need to quit sinning. You need to fix it and be happy. Change the look on your face from sad to happy to look proud. Lord, I am with you, dear God. I want to obey you. I want to follow your commands, your statutes. I want to do what you want me to do, dear God. Are those sins worth the, the relationship? Is that sin worth the relationship between you and God? Wow. Cain it was. He suffered the consequences for what he did. The anger. The killing of his brother. Mm. Ask God to show you what your sins are today. Then ask God to help you deal with those sins in a way, in a way that pleases and glorifies Him. Well, how can I turn this sin away and then Give all the glory to God because he helped me get rid of this sin. He can do that today. He can do that. All you have to do is start obeying his commands. Start obeying his statutes. God loves you today. Obey God's rule. Doing what is right in God's sight. Providing the greater freedom that grows in a way that, that we can follow God in everyday lives. Guys, if you sin in today, turn it all to God. Don't let it continue to grow in your life. Listen, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Guys, I want you to turn to Jesus today. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Ask Him to save you from your sins today. Trust in Jesus to be your Savior today. I love you guys, and I hope you have a blessed day. And I hope to see you really soon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.